All right, pre-calculus lesson 12.2. This is geometric sequences and series. This should be fairly brief because in lesson one, we already laid the groundwork for what a sequence is, what a series is, and we just need to tweak some of the details from lesson one being about arithmetic sequences and series to now lesson two being about geometric sequences and series. So here we go. This is 12.2. Oops, sorry. My... Uh... Again, I'm writing at the top, and it's always a little tough. Geometric sequences and series. All right. So arithmetic, there's a common difference every time, where you start with the first term, and you add some value to get the second, and you add that same value to get the third, add that same value to get the fourth. Same idea here, except instead of adding the same thing each time, we're going to multiply by the same thing each time. So we could say the sequence would look like this. You'd have a sub 1, and then the next term would be a sub 1 times r, and the next term would be a sub 1 times r squared, because if you multiply by r again, you've now multiplied by r twice, so it's r squared, and dot, 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 and as you could figure, um, it just keeps going like that, okay? And we could say this is a set of terms. All right, so that's what's going on there. So that could take us to, you maybe could deduce already, the nth term, the formula for the nth term, would be a sub 1. So to get the second term, we multiply by r once. To get the third term, we multiply by r twice, just like with last lesson. To get the fifth term, we were adding d four times. Here, to get the nth term, we're going to multiply by r n minus 1 times. So if you want the 27th term, you're going to multiply by r 26 times. Okay, so there's that formula. And so an example might be something like, might be something like, find the um, six, now I'll go eighth, find the eighth term of, and, oh, I didn't make sure I had a calculator on hand before I started this, and it's not an arm's reach, uh, I'll be okay. Uh, at least all I could designate a calculator. I have my phone that I could use or pull something up on my computer. Okay, find the eighth term of, let's say what we have is 2, comma, 6, comma, 18, comma, dot, dot, dot. All right, so what do we know? Well, we know a sub 1 is 2. And how do you find the ratio? You take any term and divide it by the previous term. So like if we did if we did it as 18 over 6, we would get 3. Or if we did it as r is 6 over 2, we also get 3. Okay? So 3 is our ratio here. So the eighth term, we could say a sub 8 is the first term. 2 times the ratio, 3 to the seventh power. And that is going to be something pretty big. Let me pull up this calculator here. And so let's see, starting out, I like to start with the three to the seventh here. 2,187, okay, we have that. And then times a sub one times the first, and we get 4,000. 374. So that'd be the eighth term in that geometric sequence. Okay? All right, next formula is the sum of the first n terms. This one is a little bit less intuitive. Like with the lesson one, we talked about averaging the first and the last term and then multiplying by how many. This is a little bit less intuitive. But it's, it's still pretty interesting how the formula gets here. So this is sum of the first n terms. Well, let's just start out by representing that as s sub n. And, and that would be, you know, the first term plus 
the second term, which is a sub 1 r, plus the third term, which would be a sub 1 r squared, plus dot, 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 plus uh, the last term, right? The nth term, which we already know from the previous thing that we're doing, that the nth term is a sub 1 r to the n minus 1. Okay? All right, well, what if we took this and we multiplied both sides by r? It might initially seem like, well, that, why? That doesn't really make sense, but just bear with me. So we're going to multiply the left-hand side by r. That gives us r times s sub n equals a sub 1 r plus a sub 1 r squared, right? Because if I take this... If I take this term and multiply by r, I get that, okay? Hopefully you're tracking with that all right. So will just take a second. Uh, and then the third term we multiply by r, that gives us an a sub 1 r cubed. I don't know what happened to that 3 there, a sub 1 r cubed. Um, I'm actually going to show one more for this for for this top row, I'm going to insert one more term here, which would be a sub 1 r to the n minus 2. Because if we're going up each time, then, um, in other words, if, if compared to our, so our last term, we have an n minus 1. If we step down 1 from that, we'd be at n minus 2. I added that so that this next term, so I want to do a sub 1 to the r minus 2 times r, I get plus dot 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 plus a sub 1 to the r minus, sorry, to the n minus 1. And then I had this last term. When I multiply that by r, I'm left with a sub 1 r to the nth. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some subtraction. And in particular, I'm going to subtract these entire things. So on the left-hand side, I get s sub n minus r s sub n. Let's see what happens on the right-hand side. I have a sub 1, okay? This, this term here, there, it, uh, there's nothing that matches it. So I'm just going to have that, I'm just going to leave that as a sub 1. But then check out here. I have an a sub 1 r minus an a sub 1 r. That goes away. I have an a sub 1 r squared minus an a sub 1 r squared. I didn't show it here, but here there would be an a sub 1 r cubed minus another a sub 1 r cubed. Same thing. Here there's an a sub 1 r to the n minus 2. Here there would be another a sub 1 r to the n minus 2. Here I have an a sub 1 r to the n minus, minus 1, minus another a sub 1 r to the n minus 1, okay? And what I'm left with is I'm left with like nothing minus, so I have another here, minus this a sub 1 r to the nth. Everything else cancels out, okay? Now, what I can do is I can factor on the left-hand side, I can factor the s sub n out. So I'm left with s sub n times... 1 minus r, right? Because as factor the s sub n out of s sub n, and you're left with 1. Factor the s sub n out of the minus r, and you're left with min uh, minus r s sub n, and you're left with minus r. And that equals a sub 1 minus a... Well, I can factor an a sub 1 out. Eh, I'll leave it. You don't have to. a sub 1 minus a sub 1 r to the nth. And I want a formula for the sum of the first n terms. So I'm just going to divide both sides by 1 minus r, and that gives me a sub 1 minus a sub 1 r to the nth over 1 minus r. And that is my formula. All right. Now you know how we got what you're using. So that could be something like, and I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll use what we had before. So what was that? The eighth term of... Um, 2 comma 6 comma 18. So let's say example. Find the sum of the first eight terms of 2 comma 
6, 18. Now, one nice thing about this compared to arithmetic, for arithmetic, the formula, we needed to know the first term and the last term. Here, we don't have to know what the last term is. All we need to know is a sub 1 and r and how many terms we're wanting to add. So let's list what we know. We know a sub 1 is 2. We know r is 3. And, that's, and, and we know that n, we're finding the sum of the first eight terms. That's all the information we know. So plug that in. We could say s sub 8 is the first term a sub 1. So that's 2 minus 2 times 3 to the 8th over 1 minus 3. All right, let's see what we get. So this is going to give me 2 minus uh, 3 to the 8th is 6,561 times 2. That is 13,122 over, was that negative 2? Okay. So 2 minus 13,122, that's going to give me a negative 13,120 over negative 2. So 13,120 over 2, and that gives me 6,560. So if I added up the first eight terms of this sequence, then I would get that. Okay. Uh... That should get you well set up. Oh. Uh, because I'm assuming that the little details are like finding R or, you know, figuring stuff out. Oh, you have geometric mean. Maybe we could do one like that. The idea is the same. But let's do one example just to play it safe. Sorry, my book is sliding where I have it set. All right. So let's say find... Find... This book won't stop sliding. Sorry. Stay. Stay. Let me try this. Hopefully that'll work. Uh, find two geometric means. between, and I don't know, let's go with one-third and ninety-seven. It's probably going to be very ugly, but I don't really care. All right, so basically what we're looking at is that we would have one-third, comma, some number, comma, some other number, comma, 97, and we want the two numbers in the blanks to make this a geometric series, geometric sequence. Uh, all right, so what do we know? Well, we know a sub 1. a sub 1 is one-third, and we know a sub 4 is 97. And that's mainly the thing that we're going to use. We're going to use our formula for the nth term to find what r is. So we know that a sub n is what? a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. So what we know is we know that a sub 4 equals a sub 1 r cubed. And we're going to use this to find r. So we know that a sub 4 is 97. And we know a sub 1 is 1 third. And then we're r cubed. And we're going to find r. All right, so I need to isolate r, so i got to multiply both sides by 3. So we'll do 97, 97 times 3, and I get 291. So 291 equals r cubed. And then r then can be positive or negative. Nope, because it's an odd root. So it's not plus or minus. That only happens with even roots. So then r is the cubed root of 291, which is going to be approximately, so let's just see, 291 to the power of 
one third, which is around 6.627 ish. You know, keeps going and going and going. But if we fill things in here, we would get so one third, and this is literally how this one would come out. I would say, well, when we do one third times the cubed root of 291, what do we get? We get the cubed root of 291 over 3. And then we multiply by the cubed root of 291 again. So 291 times 291. Well, I'll tell you what, I would just write it like this. What do we get here? We get the cubed root of 291 squared over 3. And what would the next step be? Multiply by the cubed root of 291 again, which gives you on top 291, the cubed root of 291 cubed, which is just 291, and then 291 thirds is what you have, and 291 thirds is 97. So there you go. Um, other than that, number 44 introduces an idea. Just be careful with the definition of what they tell you and work with that and to get a setup and figure out what that is. If you need help, though, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I think that'll get you well set up for lesson two. Cool. Hope it goes well. Let me know if you have questions. Bye.